So in this video we're going to take on the topic which is doing the rounds in Europe at the moment and causing quite a lot of excitement if you're into uh, tax and that is the Tobin tax, the Robin Hood tax. Uh, basically there's a proposal, it's come right from the top, it's come from the um, EC president himself and the proposal is that financial transactions across Europe should be subject to a transaction tax. So what we're going to do is have a look at uh, what that proposal is uh, in its current form. Uh, this will need to be approved um, later in the year. It's got to go in front of the G20 and so on. So we're at the kind of um, batting the idea around stage at the moment. But let's have a look at what it is, why um, Jose Manuel Barroso thinks it's a good idea, and then demolish all of the arguments in favour. Because actually it couldn't come at a worse time it's um, conceptually not a bad idea, Robin Hood taxes. So this one you take from the rich, the wealthy bankers, and you give money via governments to the poor. So it's got this on a kind of conceptual basis that attracts people, but actually in mechanical terms it won't work and could do a lot of damage. So let's take a look at those, those areas. So first of all, what is a Tobin tax? Well, Tobin, um, not surprisingly, was a well-known economist. Uh, well-known is understating it. He's a Nobel laureate. And uh, his idea was that one great way for governments to raise money is to impose a tax on financial services transactions, which translates into you know, buying shares and bonds and derivatives and so on. I mean, actually, he initially thought uh, the best place to target would be the foreign exchange market, but um, the EU or the EC has picked up this idea and thought, ah, here's a way we can tax the stuff that's going on in the banking system, raise a bit of money, and uh, also reduce volatility. So how would this work? Well, the current proposals are something like this. The idea would be that on, um, and these may change, but on bonds and equities, the Tobin tax would be a 0.1% percent tax. Now we haven't got all the details but presumably you take the value of the deal, uh, the purchase price if you like, and impose 0.1 percent and that would be just sliced off, doesn't sound like very much, and that would be the Tobin tax on those transactions every time they happen. And on derivatives, now that's a, a big old selection of instruments and I have videos on all of them so if you're not sure what derivatives are it doesn't really matter too much for this video take a look at my what is the future what is a swap and what are options and covered warrants and that'll tell you all about them but on derivatives the idea would be a smaller slice um, more like 0.01 percent tax okay so these are the sort of proposals being batted around so we take a slice out of every deal that involves bonds and equities and we take a slice out of every deal that involves derivatives, so futures, options, and so on. And um, this is going to be an EU-wide tax, so the idea here, for example, is that uh, for this to be applied at the moment, at least one of the parties, that means the buyer or the seller, because don't forget all these transactions involve two people, a buyer and a seller, must be based in the EU. Okay, um, so what's the rationale? Looks like a simple enough system, which I suppose is one way of justifying it. Um, what's the thinking? Well, apparently doing that would have all sorts of advantages. All right, number one is, let's face it, you get to bash the bankers, or at least that's what the politicians think you get to do. All right, why, you know, why not get the people who caused the credit crisis to pay for it? Mop it up, clean it up. So what you do is you hammer the bankers by charging them every time they deal in shares and bonds or derivatives. All right, that's the logic, by the way. Whether that'll actually work, we'll look at in a moment. But um, bashing the bankers, they cause the credit crisis. Uh, they're still taking huge salaries out. I don't disagree with any of that necessarily. But um, the solution, taking out this transaction tax may not be as effective as the politicians think it's going to be. Number two, so having taken some money away from the bankers, um, you raise money for European governments. All right, so uh, it's going to raise um, a whole load of tax. Now you might be thinking, no it's not, I mean 0.01% of a derivatives trade and 0.1% of a shares and bonds transaction 
How much could that raise? Well, estimates vary, but you could be talking um, 55 billion euro a year. Um, or something equivalent to around 10% of global banking profits. Why? Because the percentage might be small, but if you think of the millions of transactions it's going to be levied on, it clocks up pretty quickly. So it could raise a whole heap of tax for governments, even if those rates look quite small. So there's the, the second argument in favour, if you like. Number three, it will lower um, volatility and take out some of the HFT, high frequency trading. Um, so the idea is it'll introduce some more stability into the markets, it will reduce those risky derivatives transactions that everyone pins the blame for everything on at the moment, and um, it will reduce high frequency trading because basically traders are not going to want to trade as often if they have to pay a slice of the trade to the government. Okay, they're going to tend to trade less often. So for example, rather than doing a sort of a million one pound trades, every one of which attacks, attracts this tax, a little bit sliced off, you might do sort of one bigger trade less often. Uh, and the theory is, well, that's good because that'll mean high frequency trading, which caused, so politicians think, the flash crash and so on a while back will be reduced or even eliminated. So those are the sort of primary, or one or two other arguments, those are the primary arguments. And in the UK, you can even say, and in other countries, there's precedent. You can even say, Um, it's been it's been done. It, you know, it, all it is is just um, something, another tax, like UK stamp duty, for example. You know, shouldn't take the bank as long to adjust to this because we've already got a tax which is like it. There is a transaction tax in the UK on shares. When you buy a share, you pay half a percent of the purchase price as the buyer to the inland revenue. Well, that sounds a bit like paying 0.01 percent on a derivative to the inland revenue. So the argument says, well, other around the world there are these transaction-based taxes on financial markets transactions. In the UK we have one, it's called stamp duty, it raises around five billion sterling a year for the Treasury apparently, so it should be easy to just slip this one in under the radar. Okay, add in a little Tobin tax, no one will notice. Right, those are the arguments in favour. Okay, um, so will it work? And the long and short of it is, uh, no it won't, and in fact it could do a huge amount of damage. It's a tempting philosophy. It sounds like you're grabbing money from the big bad banks, taking it into governments, reducing their debts, okay, and some European governments have huge debts and are struggling to repay them at the moment, and um, you know, thereby, if you like, shave off money from the rich, you can afford to pay it, and it's only a little slice is, is the way it's being portrayed, and uh, you hand it over to the needy um, of Europe via their governments. Um, so it should, in theory, please everybody, but lots of practical difficulties. And this is not a defence of the bankers coming up, but it's really going to explain why this could be a very bad idea. Now. Before I say why it's going to be a bad idea, I don't think I'm going to win the argument. I think that the EU will go for it. The Euro was a bad idea, didn't stop them implementing it. And I think they're going to do it, no matter what Tim Bennett says about it in a video. But this is why they shouldn't, okay? Now, um, there are lots of reasons why they shouldn't, but um, one of them is this argument that in some way you reduce volatility. You won't, in fact, you'll probably increase it. Um, the Institute for Development Studies uh, have done quite a lot of work on this, and essentially, it's intuitive actually, but they've done, they've done the studies, volatility will rise. So this is why it's a disaster. Um, fewer transactions tends to mean more price spikiness than more transactions. The more transactions you have for anything, apples, potatoes, cars, houses, shares, derivatives, the more stable the price will often be because you get better liquidity. Prices don't jump around so much. You've got more transactions going on. If you reduce the number of transactions, if anything, you'll tend to increase volatility, not decrease it. So that argument's not fantastic. Number two, who is going to end up paying it? and it's not going to be the people that the politicians think it's going to be. All right, um, for starters, the high frequency traders are not stupid. So 
If they need to, they will stop high frequency trading in shares and bonds, where the Tobin tax rate is planned to be 0.1%, and start high frequency trading in derivatives, where it's 0.01%. Okay? So in other words, they'll have a kind of what they call an arbitrage opportunity. And if that doesn't satisfy them, they'll simply probably move into jurisdictions where there isn't a Tobin tax, because this is an EU-wide tax under current proposals. Well, that just means all they've got to do is find a jurisdiction to operate in where there is no Tobin tax. So unless this tax is made global, the people who are fastest on their feet, who are the, the high-frequency traders, will simply move their business. That's a very likely outcome. So you know, unless the Americans agree to play ball on this tax, for example, which seems unlikely, um, then imposing it in one part of the global markets is a bit silly. All right? Worse than that, if high frequency traders are not going to end up paying it, who will? And the answer is you and me, in part, because basically what's going to start happening, you know, this tax in theory on shares and bonds applies to everybody. So it applies to Tim Bennett buying shares, it's not just high frequency traders buying shares, it applies to my pension fund buying shares. And my pension fund is going to have a job avoiding this tax potentially. So this is yet another way that savers are going to be hit directly or indirectly, either when they go out and buy shares, for example, as a savings vehicle or bonds, or when their pension funds do. And it's not going to hit the people that um, ultimately the politicians think it's going to hit. And if you think, well, the banks will take some of the pain, they probably won't. All right? Because even if the high frequency traders don't arbitrage between the different tax rates on shares and bonds and derivatives, they'll find a sneaky way to pass on the extra cost being levied um, on to either their customers or their shareholders. So they'll either increase the cost of products that involve derivatives, for example, which will ultimately hit their customers, or they'll pass it on to their shareholders. So they're slippery old beasts, the bankers, and they're not going to be easily caught in the Tobin net, not in the way that politicians probably think they are. Um, so there's, there's the next argument. Um, thirdly, it's going to be a bit of a pain to collect. You know, I mean, having to shave off 0.01% on anything. Yeah, there's a good reason why, for example, a similar sounding transaction based tax, VAT, is set at 20%, not 0.02%. If you're going to collect, go to the effort of collecting and auditing a tax, um, arguably these little microscopic taxes are a bit of a pain, frankly. You know, even stamp duty is half a percent, not sort of 0.01%. So it's going to set up a whole load of collection headaches. And, you know, what's it going to apply to? Um, is it going to be just transactions done on exchange? London Stock Exchange, for example, or Deutsche Börse, or wherever? Or is it going to apply to the huge shadowy world of over-the-counter transactions? And how's that going to work? Um, how is the tax going to be collected and imposed there? So it, it throws up a whole load of sort of um, logistical issues. And it could have a terrible impact on growth. Now, <clears throat> even the EU or the EC have, have conceded that a Tobin tax, even at 0.01% on the value of transactions, could actually wipe out most of Europe's derivative trading altogether. And estimates of the impact on Europe's GDP, that's a wealth measure, vary anywhere from a cut of 0.5% to 1.8%. And that's a fairly catastrophic hit. In other words, you know, do you want to be hitting the banks when they're already down? It's a little bit late for that, some would argue. And if you do, and a lot of business moves outside Europe, um, you know, have the politicians thought through the impact that will have on European growth? All right, so you know it's tempting to grab this little bit of tax now, and they might succeed in grabbing a little bit up front, but the long-term impact on growth could be quite dramatic. Okay, um, so essentially, um, oh by the way, on, on collection, you know, if you're thinking, well, give us an alternative, Tim. Well, you know, if you want to hit the bankers, hit the bankers. Go after them for income tax and capital gains tax as individuals, rather than doing this kind of round the back doors. Tobin tax on uh, banking transactions. All right. Now, the final argument, the precedents. People say, well, it's, it's been done successfully before in various forms, but all the precedents are rubbish. UK stamp duty, half a percent already on share transactions. Why? 
okay, should be abolished. It's an inefficiency. The London Stock Exchange would love to see it abolished because it's one of the reasons why our exchange is slightly less competitive than other exchanges around the world. And besides, plenty of people get round stamp duty. Uh, there's no stamp duty on foreign exchange. There's no stamp duty on bonds or CFDs. So yes, we have stamp duty in the UK, but I don't view that as a precedent for a Tobin tax. And um, more importantly, Sweden um, tried a tax between 1984 and 1991, similar to a Tobin tax, and promptly business volumes or transaction volumes plummeted in Sweden and they lost a lot of work to London. So the theory is that if you impose this thing in Europe, uh, lots of business will simply migrate away from Europe. So Tobin taxes, tempting, simple, Robin Hood, take from the rich, give to the poor, but actually for many, many reasons, an incredibly bad idea.